If you've lived any reasonable uh, amount of time, you know that people keep secrets. Spouses keep secrets. Parents and children keep secrets. Employers and employees keep secrets. Uh, and yes, friends uh, keep secrets. Uh, some of us already expect that there are people we are on a need-to-know basis with. But what if I told you that God kept secrets? God who is all-loving, uh, God who is all-merciful, God who is all-gracious keeps secrets. Uh, the good news is that one of those secrets God has kept from some, he shares uh, with us today. Please turn with me to the third chapter of the epistle of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We will read the first six verses. Verse 1, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to, to me, you word, how that by revelation made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other generations and ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. I want to speak to you for a few moments about the secret is out. The secret is out. Uh, Ephesus was a, a Roman colony. It was uh, the capital of the Roman province of Asia Minor. Uh, it consisted of Jews and Greeks and which contributed to the racial tension that took place uh, in the church in Ephesus. Paul had visited Ephesus uh, during the end of his second missionary journey uh, and then he returned during his third missionary journey and spent three years in Ephesus. Uh, this led to Paul developing a strong affection uh, for the Ephesians people. Uh, he, he had a strong bond and a strong connection with them. And even when he was about to depart to go somewhere else, he called for the elders of the church in Ephesus. And they hugged him and kissed him and sent him off uh, with the grace and glory of God. Uh, Paul, however, when he gets to Jerusalem, after raising uh, offerings for the Jews in Jerusalem, confronts a riot. Uh, he had his assistant Timothy with him and the Judaizers who did not like Paul's message of righteousness of God by faith through Jesus Christ outside of the law of Moses took exception that Paul would bring Timothy into the Jewish temple. And so they start a riot and Paul winds up being detained and he goes uh, through a series of judicial hearings and during one of those judicial hearings, Paul appeals to Caesar. He wants his case to be heard in Rome because Paul had dual citizenship. He was not only a Jew, but he was a Roman. And so he could be heard in a Roman court. And so Paul gets to Rome and he's now on house arrest and it's this letter, one of many that he writes, that scholars refer to as the prison epistles. And so the first thing we see in our text in verses 1 through 4 is that believers benefit from Paul's revelation by hearing and understanding his insight into the secret. Verse 1, Paul is in prison because of the secret made known unto him. Paul is not complaining. He's not whining. He's not blaming God for his imprisonment. He is just making a statement of fact. The reason he is in prison is because he did not listen to his haters that told him to stop preaching Christ. 
He did not listen to the Greeks who told him that this gospel is for small minded people who are ignorant because uh, the foolishness of God confounded the wise. And so Paul didn't listen to his detractors, but he kept on preaching this secret. And so he found himself in prison. Uh, Paul uh, is interesting in verse number one. Paul is about to begin a prayer. He is shifted uh, in verse three to a prayer, but something in this verse made him go back to what he was talking about prior, which was the secret of God. Uh, he says for this cause in verse one, and he goes all the way down to verse 13 digressing from what he intended to do. But if you look at verse 14, you will see that Paul picks back up with the prayer he originally wanted to start in verse 1 with the same prepositional phrase, for uh, this cause. Uh, for this cause points back to chapter 2, verses 11 through 22, which is the secret of God that had been hidden in ages past, now revealed to Paul, causing him to be in prison over a secret. Uh, in verse 2, we see that the Ephesians benefited from Paul's imprisonment because they heard the dispensation of the grace of God given to him. Uh, notice here, Paul uses a rhetorical conjunction, conditional conjunction, if. Uh, normally, when people use if, there's a choice involved. Uh, but here, Paul is just being facetious because he's saying that you will understand and benefit from my secret if you read it. Well, Paul, it was in verses 11 through 22 of chapter 2. What do you mean if I have read it? And so Paul is making it clear that this is not a choice of yours. If you've gotten to chapter 3, verse 2, you've had to have read chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. And he talks about then this dispensation of the grace of God, which is given unto him. Uh, now, there are two views on this word dispensation. Uh, one view is the idea of the dispensation of the office to an apostle. And so there are those who are saying that Paul is speaking here about his appointment, his administration as the office of an apostle. Uh, but the second view, which I agree with, is that Paul uh, here refers to the administration of the secret. Uh, that the secret has been entrusted to him, and so the dispensation he's operating in is the manager of a secret. In fact, this word functions as a household manager, one Arthur points out. And so Paul then seeks to emphasize this dispensation for which he is imprisoned is for the benefit of the Ephesians. Uh, not that Paul was the scapegoat, but he's saying that my imprisonment really benefits you. And in fact, in verse 13, he tells them, don't y'all get all bent out of shape about me being in prison because it's for your good. Uh, sometimes folk have to suffer in order for the blessing of God to come in our lives. And so they don't want us to cry over them. They want us to celebrate God for their tenacity and fervor for fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, uh, Paul wants to make this benefit so abundantly clear uh, that he uses two prepositions of advantage. Uh, in verse 1, he says uh, that I'm a prisoner for you Gentiles. Uh, in verse 2, he says that the dispensation is given for me to you, or to both of these prepositions of advantage, meaning you get something out of my present situation. You get something out of the present dispensation that God has given to me, and it's all for your good. Verse 3, Paul then says that the Ephesians heard the administration of the grace of God because the secret was revealed to him. Uh, this is important because Paul is not bragging, uh, he's not boasting, but he's pointing out that God has made me a central figure in the spread of the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, notice then, if you recall in Acts, that Paul was on his way to arrest some church folk uh, when Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and told him, why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you persecuting me? And God goes on 
Christ goes on to say uh, that I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their blinded eye, to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. Paul is a bad brother. He, he's a bad uh, brother. And so uh, this dispensation then was received by Paul. He is important to church liturgy. This is why the New Testament is filled with the writings of Paul because it is Paul who received the revelation uh, from God. Lord have mercy. Paul states then that the secret was made known to him by revelation. Uh, notice that King James, uh, a white man, didn't write this for Paul uh, because he wanted to keep blacks enslaved and it was just a religion to oppress black people. Uh, but Paul says, I received this from God himself. Uh, this is the word of God. Is it infallible? It is inerrant. Uh, it is truth that is not up for debate. Paul received it from the mouth of God. God told Paul, come here and let me whisper a little something, something in your ear because uh, folk ain't heard the secret uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, Lord Nida defines revelation as to uncover or to take out of hiding. Uh, it depicts then an image of a secret being hidden or kept by God until he chose to tell it unto Paul. Uh, this is why Paul is such a bad brother. He could have told it to Mark and, and Anthony. He could have told it to John and Jude, but he chose a man named Paul, the, least, the less than the least, the worst of all sinners, a man who was a resting Christian. He chose him to share his secret. This, this speaks, ladies and gentlemen, to the grace of God, that it don't matter how bad you are, it don't matter what you've done in life, God can take you from the gutter and put you among princes. <laughs> Scholar Kenneth Weiss uh, defines this mystery that is revealed unto Paul as a secret purpose of God. Uh, Wearsby defines it as a sacred secret. Two scholars of high esteem, both attributing the mystery of Christ to a secret. Uh, Paul states that this secret was made known to him by God. And so in verse 4, the Ephesians understand Paul's insight into the secret because they read his previous explanation. Uh, they read it so they understand it, but Paul wants to go a little further. In a minute, he's going to go a little deeper and summarize all of them verses. Verse 11 to 22 of chapter 2 is a lot of information, and so Paul is going to boil it down. He's going to streamline that mystery, that secret, in just five words. When Paul says uh, he wrote it, he refers to 211 to 22, and the summation of the explanation of the gospel of this mystery is that the Gentiles, everybody who's not a Jew in the Bible, uh, the races are divided up between Jew and everybody else. Uh, and so we all are Gentiles if we are not Jews. And so Paul says that the secret of God is that Gentiles are made one with Jews through Jesus Christ. Uh, I had to recently write a paper for a leadership class, and in it, uh, they wanted us to talk about conflict, and uh, I don't have conflict at the church. We all are like a family. We get along well. I didn't know any conflict on the staff, so I chose a race in America, and don't clap too soon, uh, uh, because the Trayvon Martin case has stirred up a lot of emotion. Uh, the shootings in Tulsa, Oklahoma have stirred up a lot of emotions. And I wrote in this paper that according to Barna, which is a, a respected polling agency, uh, it said in 2005, 80% of Americans claim to be Christian. Uh, now, I'm not saying they're born again believers, uh, but 80% of Americans, over 80% actually, claim to be Christian. So my premise was, if racial reconciliation is to take place in the church or in America, it has to start first in the church. Because if you can fix the 80%, we can deal with the other 20 who want to be hatred and bigotry and revelation. And so in that paper, you have to lay out some steps. And so one of the things I say is that black folk got to learn how to forgive. Uh, we can't hold on to slavery forever. 
uh, all of this talk about post-traumatic slavery syndrome. You can be a victim and a slave if you want, but God has set me free in Jesus Christ. And so I ain't got no post-traumatic slavery syndrome. I'm free by the blood of the lamb. And so we have to learn how to forgive and to move on from slavery. If you can have more millionaires in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 50 years from slavery than the entire nation combined, we ain't got no post-traumatic slavery syndrome. We got post-crack traumatic syndrome. These are the grandkids of the crack generation. We benefit then from Paul's insight into the mystery of Christ when we value our brothers and sisters in Christ who are of different ethnicities and races as being one with us. We are not in competition with the evangelical church or the Latino church. We are one race in Christ and we must start living like we know the secret of God. Then my second point or Paul's second point in verses 5 and 6 is that believers share a new relationship with one another through the gospel. Verse 5, he says that the secret was not revealed to previous generations, but is now revealed to God's holy apostles and prophets. Uh, This word as, when he says, was not revealed in times past, as is now revealed, is a comparative statement. It is a, a comparative conjunction that is evaluating periods through human history. Uh, up to the time of Paul, nobody knew the secret. It was not until the time of Paul that God chose to reveal his secret. And Paul thinks this is a big deal. Why would God keep it secret from Abraham and Moses? Why would God keep it secret from Daniel and Joseph? It was because he was waiting on us. Hallelujah. Uh, He didn't want folk to know the secret until he had a chance to tell it to us through the apostle Paul. Paul was sent especially to the Gentiles. Uh, John was not sent to the Gentiles. Peter was not sent to the Gentiles. In Acts he said that I don't deal uh, with unclean things and God had to check Paul uh, or check Peter. Peter wouldn't even sit down with the Gentile Christians and Paul had to check him. And so Paul loved us because he understood that Gentiles were separated from the commonwealth of Israel and it's only through Jesus Christ that those of us who were strangers to God become his friend. There uh, are are two groups of people uh, who argue on this comparison of generations past not knowing the mystery and those uh, in today's time knowing the mystery. One group says that this as, this comparative conjunction, is a conjunction or comparison of degree. Uh, What they mean is that the mystery of Christ was partially here in the Old Testament or in times past and is now fully revealed today. Uh, That's one group. There's another group which I go with now that I'm a respected scholar, but uh, they call it a comparison of kind. Uh, And they say, and I want to get this right, uh, that no level of mystery was given in the Old Testament period and was revealed for the first time in the New Testament period. Well, why do you go with them? Very simply, in 3.9 of this letter, Paul says that the mystery was hidden in God from the beginning. So if it was hidden in God from the beginning, how could they partially know it prior to Paul? Uh, That's mutually exclusive events. You can't be partially hidden and fully made known. And so Paul then clarifies that this mystery is a comparison of kind, and it was revealed not only to him, but the apostles and the prophets uh, also received the revelation by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, These are the same people who Paul refers to in 2.20, apostles and prophets, uh, as the foundation of the church. Why? Because they received this revelation of the mystery of Christ, and it was their responsibility as the foundation to build a house for God. Uh, Christ, the chief cornerstone, but they were the ones who would build this house uh, for God. Uh, And so then in 6a, uh, we see that the secrets of Christ is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, fellow members of the body, 
fellow sharers of the promise in Christ. I just say we all fellows. That just uh, simplifies it for me. And so the mystery of Christ to New Testament apostles and prophet was that there was a new relationship between Jew and Gentile. This is important because the Jews viewed Gentiles as dogs, uh, literally viewed them uh, as dogs. And then when the Gentiles got saved, they viewed unbelieving Jews as dogs. And so here you have in the household of faith, two groups of people that think each other are dogs. And so when Paul says that this secret is such a marvelous thing, such a marvelous revelation, it would be on a lower scale of the Crips and the Bloods or the GDs and the Vice Lords baking cakes for each other when they moved into the neighborhood, going uh, to visit each other at the hospital when they were wounded or injured. It, it would be like the worst enemies in the world now becoming jovial family members. And it may sound funny, but it happens as a result of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For what is impossible with man is possible with God. For with God, all things are possible to them that believe. So you could be the worst enemy and still be the best of family members. Paul is the example that God uses to share the mystery because Paul was the greatest enemy of the gospel and yet God made him his prized possession that's what God does for us he raises us up from the dunghill of life and helps us to accomplish stuff we never knew we could accomplish he says that he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end and I just feel that somebody in here that God's about to expose you you've been kept secret uh, but I speak into your life right now that God's about to remove the covers he's about to release you to your destiny so that you can see what God has called you to be this 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 phrase fellow heirs fellow members of the body fellow sharers of the promise uh, Paul I argue plays off Old Testament prophetic tradition because if you know anything about Old Testament Hebrew prophets sometimes they will use alliteration which is beginning each word with the same letter or they would use rhyme now they, they didn't start the hip-hop generation or nothing but but they would use rhyme and so I believe Paul being a Hebrew understood when talking about revelation and the prophetic consequences uses Old Testament prophetic literary techniques to accomplish what they would need to understand from 2 11 through 22 and I'm gonna read this not to impress you but I want you to hear this because the church in Ephesus would not have received Bibles they would receive a piece of parchment that would be read to everybody it would be read aloud and so Paul says fellowship of the mystery he says soon kleronoma kai soon soma kai sumetika you could remember that if you spoke Greek, right? Soon kleronoma kai susoma kai sumetika. They would be able to boil down 211 to 22 in five words. So even if they couldn't talk about being separated from the commonwealth of Israel, being a household for God, they could say fellow heirs, fellow members, fellow sharers. And they would sum it all up because Paul used this literary technique as fellow heirs Gentiles share in the inheritance of the Jews we weren't even part of the family but because God grafted us in all that belongs to them belongs to us as fellow members of the body and Paul uses that word or the whole New Testament only uses that word one time. One author said that Paul just made the word up because it's not found anywhere else in the New Testament. Uh, but we share in the same body as Jews, probably referring to the household of God, of God in 220. Uh, he also says then that we came into the knowledge of truth by becoming a part of the children of Israel. We became in a relationship with God. Uh, in other words, 
as Gentiles, we did not know God. He says that God was not a part of our world. Only the Jews knew the true God. That's why uh, God would always fight for them. And so, so that they will know that I am the true and living God. I'm not a piece of wood. I'm not a piece of straw, a piece of stone that don't speak. I'm the only God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. And now because of Christ, we know the true and living God. As fellow sharers in the promise of Christ, we share in the covenant of promise to Israel, which ultimately was the promise of a Messiah who would deliver them. He came and they rejected him. And so he came to us. And so the promise from Zechariah and Haggai about the servant and the branch, we share in a promise that was never preached to us in human history. Six B, the last point, the secret is achieved through the gospel. The preposition by uh, indicates means. How is all of this accomplished? By, through the means of the gospel. An intimate personal union between historical warring factions made possible through the proclamation of the good news. Because Christ came and died for all of humanity, we too share in the commonwealth of Israel. We become a household of God. Uh, the good news is that Jesus Christ, who was once far away from, when we were far away from God, we have now become near by the blood of Jesus. And so touch your neighbor and do me a favor and say, neighbor, the secret is out. Look at your neighbor on the other hand and say, neighbor, neighbor, the secret is out. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Paul didn't throw in the towel. Uh, I'm so glad that while they were criticizing him, Paul kept on snitching. I'm so glad that while they were beating him with stones, Paul kept on snitching. I'm so glad that when they were whipping him, Paul kept on snitching. I'm, I'm so glad that when they threw him in prison, Paul kept on snitching. So Paul can be a penthouse snitch, but I'm glad that he came and delivered me. Uh, Paul didn't give it to Moses. Uh, Paul didn't tell the secret to Abraham. Paul didn't tell the secret to Isaac or Jacob. He didn't tell it to the interpreter of dreams, Joseph and Daniel. He didn't tell it to the eagle eye prophet, Isaiah, but he told it to a man named Paul. And because of the ministry of Paul, who kept on fighting a good fight of faith, uh, I'm now free in Jesus. Uh, they can talk about me all they want, uh, but I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I was once an enemy of God, uh, but now I'm his friend. Uh, I was once separated from the commonwealth of Israel. Now I'm the spiritual seed of Abraham. Uh, I need some people to make some noise in here. If you believe that you are the righteousness of God, if you believe that you were chosen from the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame before him in love, uh, I'm glad he saved me. I'm glad he came and found me. I'm glad he delivered me from my crime yourself and because he loved me huh, with an everlasting love huh, I'm free I'm delivered I'm set free they can look at what I used to be huh, but today I'm clean huh. today I don't have the earring today I'm not in prison huh, because Jesus came to tell a secret 